Joshua 1, 9. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. And that strengthened Joshua. When you hear the Lord say something like, be strong. Hmm. I'm telling you tonight, be strong oh. and of good courage. Yeah. He doesn't say, be courageous and strong. No, be strong and of good courage. Hmm. There's a good courage and there's probably a bad courage. If there's a good courage, there's an opposite. Hmm. Okay? Good courage is something the Lord strengthens you with. Okay? It's a good courage. Okay? Turn with me to Jeremiah 1. <laughs> Well I'm going to read 8, 9, and 10. If everyone's there, give me an amen. 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 Jeremiah 1, 8, 9, and 10. <laughs> Here's another encouragement from the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, we came from the front of the Bible, now we're about in the middle of the Bible. And God says, Do not be afraid of their faces, uh -oh. for I'm with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day sent you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, and to build and to plant. Mm. As another encouragement, mm. the Lord once again, huh. don't be afraid of their faces. <laughs> That's, right. That's the flesh. And they look at you and they're scowling at you because the Lord's made, told you and put you forth to do something, to say something, and they're scowling at you and they're <laughs> looking at you and they're calling you this and they're calling you that. Come but on, what does the on. Lord say? Don't be afraid of their faces. The Lord will fill you with the love of Christ. Uh -huh. He will fill you up to stand in the middle of them, smile with them, with love in your heart, and tell them what the Lord's told them, told you to tell them. Amen. Which the underlying message should continue to be: <laughs> repent of your sins, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That should be the underlying message at all times. Yeah. Now, no, when you go to do that, the Lord's going to fill you with love to do it. Okay. But they're never going to be happy when you tell them that. They're never happy. They put our Lord on the cross for telling them that. They weren't happy. They put Him on the cross. But I'm going to tell you why. He took a guy next to Him. I'm going to tell you something. The guy next to Him Come on. went to paradise with Him that very day. day. That very day. Come on, son. That man didn't know anything about Jesus. Come on. Nothing. Come on. He was a purebred, sinner, thieving dog like most of us. <laughs> he was saved right then. That goes right back to Acts too. Whoever called on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come on. Amen. This man was a sinner by all sorts. Okay? But the man to the right, okay? He mocked him. He mocked the Lord. Come on. Lord would Lord descended before he ascended. You got to see that man again. That quick. You got to see that man again. That quick. And told him, I told you. So he went down and he told him. He went down and he told him when he snatched the keys. I always had this picture in my head. And the Lord walked down in there. He walks up to the, to the devil and he says, Give me those. And he snatches the keys to death and hell. And goes back up. Okay? Yeah. And at that moment right there, you see Satan trembling, <laughs> just trembling before yeah. the Lord mm -hmm. of the things that he had done all throughout human history. Mm -hmm. Knowing that point right there is when he knew his time was short. Time was short. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's the right. point. Yeah. He knew yeah. his time was short. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. He thought it couldn't happen. He thought he had done everything he, he could possibly do. That's the moment he knew his time was short. Joy. That's the moment. Mm -hmm. sure Praise God. Amen. Amen. I want to give you another example of not to fear in Acts. 
And the Lord led me from the beginning of the word, the middle of the word, almost down to the end of the word. Praise the Lord. He's good, ain't he? Amen. He's good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Acts uh, 18. spoke to Paul in, in a night vision and said, Do not be afraid, but speak and do not keep silent. For I am with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you. For I have many people in this city. Now you see, the Lord has many people in this city. Amen. And that's just the truth of it. Mm -hmm. In the Treeport and surrounding areas, we should never be as afraid to speak mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, because He has many yeah. people in this city. Yeah. Yeah. He has many believers in this city. Mm -hmm. There are many people who will not deny the name of Christ here. Amen. As a matter of fact, this may be one of the final strongholds in the United States of America. Oh. Amen. Where people have not fallen as of yet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just have this pressing notion and I can't give you a thus saith the Lord on it, but the people in this area are going to come together when the press comes in. Mm -hmm. People in this area are going to feed one another. People in this area are going to take care of one another. Okay? People in this area are going to go forth and they're going to create fruit for the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of everything going on, they're going to walk out and they're going to uh, tell the sinners to repent of their sins in the midst of all those things. And people are going to pour in and pour in and pour in. I just think that Century Town will be full of people giving their souls to Christ. Amen. People will be living over there probably. Huh. People will meet over there at the Red River and be baptized down in the Red River again Amen. like it probably was back in the 1800s. Amen. I believe without a shadow of a doubt that this area will be one of the final places to go. Amen. But what did the Lord say? He would keep. He would keep the church of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Now, I always go back and say, Philadelphia, Philadelphia. Well, they call that the city of brotherly love. Mm -hmm. See? They love. I believe that was one of the biggest keys in them because they didn't, they didn't break the Lord's commands. They kept His commandments. Mm -hmm. And His commandments were the two that Jesus said. Yeah, that's love. The city of brotherly love. Boy, that's a new Jerusalem if I ever heard of it. That's a city of love. They love their God. They love their God. I want to turn back to Habakkuk. 